now. I'm showing the WIME project, Kubernetes directory. To launch this, there's actually only two commands that need to be run. Uh, one to set up some uh, initial configuration, and it's a one-click script here that is going to launch all of the ONAP instances. Just before I get to that, though, I wanted to show you quickly structure that we have here. Uh, we have each ONAP component represented by a directory in the ONAP project. Here's ANAI, AFSC, MSO, and all that's contained in here are the uh, Kubernetes service and deployment descriptor file. If you're familiar with the Docker files that are used to create the Docker images already, this will look very familiar to you. The deployment descriptor, it, it, it looks very similar. It uh, identifies the Docker image that uh, we're trying to deploy. Um, environment variable that are passed into the container, which is launched. The, the volume mounts, volumes themselves, and uh, ports that are exposed. And this is showing the MariaDB that's used by MSO. And this one here, the MSO uh, application itself, same type of structure with the addition that there's this thing called init containers. I'll describe that a little later, but it, it helps us set up dependencies. So why don't I kick this off right now? I'm going to do step one, which is the configuration of the application. What we do to create multiple instances of ONAP, we give it a namespace to isolate it from other instances. So all the components within that instance under this namespace can communicate with one another in isolation from other instances. So when I run this, what we're going to see is I'm on a Kubernetes host right now. There is this root directory shared in the cluster, and we're going to dump the configuration for the demo instance. It takes only a few seconds. See that we have this directory created, and as it's creating, there's uh, config directories for each of the components being built up here. This is the external configuration that is mounted in those YAML files I was showing you. And here I'm going to use a uh, client tool called kubectl. This allows me to interact with the Kubernetes cluster and it tells me all of the containers and pods that are running in the environment. Here we can see that the Create config actually ran a container that did the config initialization for the namespace demo. And once it's completed its config, you see that it's disappeared. Uh, the rest of the containers you're seeing are actually just part of the Kubernetes system. Okay. So there's nothing else running on here. We have the configuration laid out. I'm going to go to the second step here to deploy. It all script, and in the same fashion, I'm going to specify what instance I'm running or what namespace I'm going to run this in. So here I have the choice of just deploying every component. Enough, or given this A option here, I can actually select which components I want to kick up. In some cases, if it's a dev environment and I already run up the whole system, I can simply uh, remove and replace you know, one or more of these components. It's quite easy to set up a test environment. What's happening right now is it's walking through those directories you saw and it's 
launching kube control command to make a request to Kubernetes and up the ONAP container. We look back. That's up. I'm, they're starting to spin up here slowly. We have NAI, FC, Call of the so they're all coming to life. Now this takes about seven minutes to spin up all components and get them into the um, operational state. What you are seeing here is some requests to start the containers are pending and we have these init state. And I'll set the look back at the MSO. That relates to the init containers. So before we actually kick off the MSO container, these are this is like a precondition. I run a, a container that waits for the MariaDB components to be ready. So this is using two technologies that comes with Kubernetes out of the box already. It has uh, the init containers. We had we can do pre-processing for launching our main container, and readiness probes, which are uh, checks to see about uh, whether that component is actually in service, whether it can handle a request. And once it is, it unblocks the spawning of the main container. Look at something a little more complicated like SDC. Here we have actually two init containers. This first one waits for these three back end, these three components here, the S, the S, and KB. Make sure that they're ready before launching the next init container, which is waiting, waiting on the message router component, DMAP. Once those dependencies are resolved, we go on to run the SDC backend. Now, two minutes in, we have a number of components that are running now. Some are still in waiting for the components to start up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you. Uh, we use Kubernetes, but um, we like to use Rancher as a, as a way to easily deploy and uh, administer Kubernetes itself. Okay. We have a small cluster that we set up here. If you look at it, we have two nodes that are running right now. Look at each node. You can see these are 32 gig systems. We can run all of ONAP actually on just one uh, blade or VM with uh, 32 gigs. Uh, everything except VCAE. So uh, that puts more memory requirements on us. I think we require about 50 gig if we introduce. See some of the containers that are starting up here, some that stopped, which are the readiness probes, the init and gig init related to the init container. You can see that the CPU is going up, memory is going up a bit, about 13 gigs that the whole system right now. We just recently added a second node to our cluster because we are. Uh, Actively uh, working on the DCAE containerization and deployment. Okay, so we're at six minutes, we're almost there. A couple more. What I'll do right now is I'll jump in. So from Rancher, I can get to Kubernetes, has its own little UI uh, that you can use. Look at all the namespaces right now, and you can see the deployments that have come up and ones that are turning up now, like the model loader service for AI and so 
setting up. The other applications are, are there. You can see that uh, all the components are broken into their individual. Demo, that's what I chose here. So we can hone in on what is MSO doing. So here's the MariaDB and the application it's running, what image they pulled down uh, along the expertise. Here's the memory requirements for MSO. Uh, okay, so we got everything running. Seven minutes, eight minutes. What we can do is run a health check on that. What we'll see out of this is the um, health check will fail for DCAE because it's not deployed in this scenario right now. Um, we have pass on SCNC. Build on robot test suite. Okay. So <laughs> one thing is that we've set o OM up to pull the latest versions of, uh, of the Docker images. But sometimes it becomes unstable. Here's a case of this is failing because something has changed. I am doing right now. We deployed a portal, a VNC session here actually, that we can use to access the ecom portal. So this is a jump box effectively to get into the ONAP space uh, so we can access all those components internally. portal running it's running it on uh, in, in Kubernetes or on start onboarding. 